to watch what somebody else does. It does not matter. Very mad guys do a thing. <laughs> so what did you think? What was your ultimate goal? What did you want to do? To be the best. To be the best. Within myself. I'm not in competition with anybody. Age of 30, you should be mature enough to accept these four realities. Most people never understand the fourth reality until they're 50. You may want to save this video for future reference. Number one, instead of focusing on the people who have gone, focus on the people in your life who have chosen to be here. Number two, turn your attention to those who have stayed and those who appreciate and respect you. Focus on those who support you and make your life more beautiful. You're surrounded by people who know they want you in their lives. Never take them for granted. Yeah. All right. Mr. Reese Jowers, welcome to Trash and Treasure, yes, buddy. Yes, sir. Reese Canyon. Canyon, sorry. Reese, Ca Canyon. Reese Canyon Jowers is the full name. Okay. Yeah, Reese, yeah, Reese Canyon is the, the name, artist. Dude. Name. <laughs> nice, man. So here, um, how about you um, tell, you know, for the people that don't know you out there. Yeah, let them know who you are. How about you? Yeah, let them know, let them know what's going on. All right. My name is Reese Canyon. I am a musician, um, music producer, singer, songwriter. Businessman, um, shaman, and <laughs> shaman in training. That's a lofty thing to claim. But, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And um, I just started out making beats in my bedroom. And I always had a bigger vision for it. You know, I always felt this could grow into something. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, just kept chipping away and started doing shows locally um, after lots of releases, lots of ups and downs and ups and downs and, you know, strange management situation and went to college at UF for one at one point and, um, you know, eventually I end up back in New Smyrna and I kind of get this, you know, COVID hits and I get this sense of like, this is there's some sort of barrier here and something has to happen yeah. to change and um you know long story short i get the calling go to la you got to go to la move to la and i'm like who well, who, who what was yeah it? was what? that something in you yeah <laughs> what gave you the calling? What was the calling? Okay, so was I... Was it a friend calling you? I always... Calling right, calling? That's a great so I, I, knew, <laughs> I knew for years. I knew for years. And um, I actually got an opportunity to uh, go do ayahuasca with some Colombian tribe people. All right, so, so okay. So that's so much information. Let's take it back a little bit. Let's take it back <laughs> a little bit. So talk about... Let's talk about the production side of things. Because uh, I know you as... Uh, you know the musician you and i have worked together you know a bunch we definitely uh covid definitely gave us a uh, time together a bunch when when that when all that started we were we were together a lot and trying to make uh some music and trust me i learned a lot in the process because i didn't know anything about the produ producing side of things you know? okay it's just you know i'm i i know a little bit so of he music. was like your inroad to this almost well yeah he was or like, like it was he, your inroad he would hear something and I, in a way i was kind of in a way i was able to like find some ideas on the on the yeah, yeah. guitar or the bass and then which I'm just now move. starting to realize like there's all these little idiosyncrasies behind the scenes. Yeah. Like he just taught me about you know the oh, little yeah. video clicker thing. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize there was a science <laughs> behind uses? this. Oh yeah. So I can only imagine on like a production level yeah. what that must be. So talk to us. Uh, how what what was you know usually the genres how how you started were the names of the I know that um I saw your tattoo right here and I completely forgot what the what the name of that is. How about you tell people and explain to them a little bit about it. Oh the oh this tattoo no, so, no, the, on the other on the other hand the that this one? one yes that logo oh so yeah the, oh when yeah the, shot your when I shot your yeah, music video so that's the logo at the end the original my original kind of uh, start, start collect my start original from the beginning yeah <clears throat> <laughs> so in the begin in the very beginning we find ourselves back to probably 2014 2015 okay. right mm -hmm. and um, me and a few friends we started kind of making music separately and then we found out, you know, we were, we just started with freestyling in the car. And then it- Hell yeah, that brings yeah. me so far back. It all, it all started with freestyling in the car and then we were like, you know, I think we could do something here. And um, I kind of started producing and engineering a little bit. So I was like the guy that kind of like brought it all together for a while. 
and eventually just going our separate ways we kind of the group kind of dissolved but it was called conscious collective and we right. were we were like i like that name yeah we were like awesome, a conscious we were like a conscious like a spiritual rap group <laughs> we're like b like bars you know we weren't making pop songs well it's like bliss and esso they're one of my favorite and that's who they are out of australia they only rap positivity awesome. and, and they talk about the ethos yeah. and the, in the universe yeah. it's pretty cool it's rare to find yeah that, no, it's hard. so, anyway, so no 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 it's okay so we were doing that we kind of went our separate ways i went to uf so this is you know that's from the UF. i graduated 2015 so i end up at university of florida and i'm basically just buying time to like make music pretty much mm -hmm. you know it's kind of going to class kind of not going to class but you know doing good enough to pass and um i did a couple semesters and this guy that I'd known for a while, he kind of got tied in with some stuff in the industry, and he was kind of like a cousin to me, and he wanted to sign me for like a management thing to, you know, pretty much extend an opportunity. And I got into that, um, so I leave college, come back to New Smyrna, and then end up moving to Palm Coast, moving in with the guy that's my manager, and then my other friend, Ricky, who he was managing. So we're living right. in Palm Coast in like a mini mansion on the beach. And nice. it's like 2016. King of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Never been more depressed. Like oh, that was wow. probably, that okay. was probably my lowest point. But it's like, we got a studio, but it was just, you know. Explain to us why the depression, oh, yeah, you, and why the I think the honestly, world. just like always feeling like you're missing something. And so then you end up like, F trying to find it in substances like we were go. never doing anything like not paying too... attention to like what's in front of you more worrying about what you don't have kind of thing yeah exactly yeah, and then you get all. sad mm -hmm. and I think all of us we're working in the yeah. restaurant too so i feel like we just smoked and drank too oh, much probably that's the toxicity <laughs> of the service industry right there yeah. dude like i loved it i wanted to be a chef but i found myself in a place i'm getting out of work at 11 i'm going to the bar i'm waking up at 12 and that's the cycle yeah exactly. that's your life never exactly. ending yeah when ha when hangovers became an everyday thing, I'm like, oh, this is a problem, yeah. and, and it's the job. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I, crazy. Yeah, I did a little. Uh, I served served ten years in the service industry. Yeah, Made, more than enough. Yeah, yeah. I still I still say corner and right behind yeah. whenever I'm at restaurants. 86. Like I was at Third Wave today, and like the girl was like, I was like behind behind, and I just found myself like in the mode. But um, <laughs> absolutely. I was there mid rush. I was like, I used to work at Third Wave, so I was yeah, like, okay, okay. thought I had to like, you know, shout out to Third Wave, kill take some rock. Awesome. I was like ready to take some rock shrimp out to a table for somebody. <laughs> oh, I'd kill for some fucking rock <laughs> shrimp right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, awesome, so, so let's see, where are we at? So that land, that lands us. You're in Palm Coast. We're in Palm little, Coast. Little time in your life. Yeah. So at this Sad in a mansion. at this point, <laughs> Sad in a mansion. You hear that a lot. Yeah, in a mini mansion. In a in mini, mini mansion, mansion. with. No money, and we were paying like three hundred bucks a month rent. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like that's ironic, isn't it? Like in that moment, like if you take it at face value, should be the height of your life. Yeah. Early twenties. Yeah. Mansion on the beach, mini mansion on the beach, cheap rent. Yeah. Where's the cheap beer and the girls? Yeah, exactly. Anyways, <laughs> working at a pizza place, no girls. <laughs> um, I I had like an on and off girlfriend, but it was like it was just not. She was in New Smyrna, so it was, it was, it was not. We'll just drift on past yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Long distance relationship. Never really work out. But, um, so, okay, yeah. So this is at, like, XXXTentacion, Lil Peep, Lil Pump. Like, those guys are, like, this is, like, their, the height at this point. You know, it's, like, so we're listening to a lot of that, because it, especially in Florida, really big. Yeah. Like, SoundCloud era. Um. And so I feel like that probably had a little bit of influence, mm -hmm. you know, listen to the dark music and then just really just wanting to be there almost. Yeah, you, know? you, you, were, you wanted to live the lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it was just like. Because that sounds like me when I was every... young with Tupac and listening to Biggie and listening to all these. And then Lil Wayne comes on the scene. Lil Wayne and, <sighs> when Lil Wayne came just... on the scene, everything changed for our generation. Yeah. Like, it was like, yeah. but. You know, if you and then you, we really found out as a generation, like if you don't have a work ethic and a desire to go, like you will. Like I mean, it happened to all of us. Yeah, I remember, like just like you're talking about, sitting in my Chevy, I had a Silverado. Me, Frankie, and Randy would sit there, smoke a blunt, and we're freestyling over beats for hours. You know, and like in our heads at the moment, like yeah, we could be rappers, but then I was like, oh, this isn't gonna work for me. Like yeah. I'm a white dude in New Smyrna. Like it's it's beautiful that you've chased this dream and you're making something yeah, of it yeah, yeah. because I too am a pipe dreamer. 
Dude. And, and I've been told my whole life it's not going to work. You, you need to anything, stop it. Anything you want. It's just you have to be willing to commit to it long enough. And that's what I found. Like, for some reason, I feel like natural talent musically just wasn't, like, given to me. Like, everything that I've built talent-wise has taken a long time to, like, painstakingly. Discipline beats talent yeah. every time. Yeah, from, and, exactly. That's what I was going to say. But from a person that knows a little bit of music and is able to somewhat orchestrate something, you, your vision is very clear. Even from when we were doing the first style of music that we were doing in the beginning to what we just did in the last session, which was like indie rock, yeah. which I've never really uh, attempted to write. But then I heard you guys' input and we came up with Yeah, you ideas. you know music though, so you just know yeah. how to put it together. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, do, do you feel like, you know, as musicians, like when you go, I, I follow a lot of writers. Like I like the behind the scenes type musicians. I go on YouTube, listen to a lot of acoustic guys. I'm a, I'm a country and and blues and bluegrass guys nice. but I, I often see like the great writers like stapleton and childers like they talk of like going down to louisiana and writing a jazz and they're like i've never even i don't know anything about jazz <clears throat> but these guys pull these random artists in cause, almost because they're looking for that outside perspective oh, and then they've, they, they've like do you guys find that like almost in the music industry trying to like oh you're a rapper i'm a rock i do rock and roll get over here and help me we're going to collaborate and yeah. make something beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like it's gotten to a point where, like, everything in under the sun has been written. You, you're not going to write nothing specifically new. And that's why I feel like a lot of these collaborations are starting to come out, like rock rap and country rap yes. and rock this. And you know what I mean? All it's these all fusion things are happening because we got to come up with something new, you know? And that's just part of the evolution, in my opinion. What did you, you know? say the other day? It's all like a What do you think about that? Yeah, right? I think that's kind of my whole. So a lot e of people hate those kinds of fusions. They're like, "Well, why are you guys fusioning this and that and the other?" Blah blah blah. But I was like, well, "Country you know, and rap is what tough else are you me. gonna do?" Just gonna <laughs> Country and rap is tough for me to listen. Yeah, to. yeah, same here, <laughs> same here. Anyways, but then you got Morgan Wallen, who pretty much is country and rap. He's I one, would put he's one of the Roll biggest and and Yellow Wolf atop the pantheon of those. Yellow Wolf, dude, Le that is, legendary, that is, bro. That I is a country rapper. He goes like, yeah. way back. Isn't hip hop and uh, hip hop and country are like the two biggest industries, money making industries it. right now? Yeah, bro, country's going crazy. Yeah. I've definitely been dabbling a little bit in country. I feel like it's part of my soul, and mm -hmm. um, I think boy. I think living, yeah, right? <laughs> I think living in LA, like I I wasn't aware of like how southern I was until I was not in the South, okay. Right? Okay. and then I was like. Oh, like I I thought I was super I was like I thought I was super beach kid yeah. and then I'm like me other people and I'm just like man you, go, you never you go know. too long without hearing ma'am or thank you or sir and you're like what's going on here? It's not until you get out that you realize exactly kind of the differences. Anyways, I kind of took us off track with that one. No, I, I love it, but back to the fusing genres thing, that's kind of one of my my kind of like ethos behind making music is like I want to contribute to pushing the culture forward and maybe like right. making making things you're kind of that are kind of unprecedented yeah, yeah. and so you know still making like pop records but then also kind of like really getting more experimental and like mm -hmm. seeing like where we can push it and okay. not not genre blending just for the sake of genre blending but just i just go by like what do i hear next mm -hmm. and it can go so many so different directions. So it's authentic but. and has substance. Right, like right, if you're right. just doing it just, yeah, it, it's like Denzel Washington has this great clip, like, m don't mistake movement with progress, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Right? Like you can run in place forever and get nowhere. Nowhere. But the fact that you're like, think, it's something you love, so you're like, hey, I want to try this. It's not like, oh, you know what would be fun? Funk mixed with reggaeton, let's do this. Yeah, and that's I, can, even a thing. And I, can even, I can even relate that with the film uh, side of things when, when I video, we're doing another fishing show. You know, mm -hmm. but if you really look close to the fishing shows that are like in major channels or that are in like these like dot com kind of channels, you know, in TV yeah. situations, they're just a lot of like um, just like one way of doing things. And what I'm trying to bring in with my friend is just four friends that go fishing. on a trip. They just love fishing and we're going to film a couple of fish and then we're going to have fun. And hopefully get a couple of sponsors to support the trips. Yeah. You know, it's so it's like it's it's you don't really see that on YouTube. You don't see that. So yeah, so it's it's you always got to kind of come up with something new to to keep things moving forward. You know, it's our duty as people. Yeah, yeah. To take our art and help it grow. Mm -hmm. Somebody planted a seed. You know, like BB King and, and all these great people planted seeds for you musicians a long time ago. Yeah. And now it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we get to study the greats that came before us. Always. And that's like the biggest cheat code is like right. actually actually studying and listening to music. And I honestly listen to like a lot of different genres. I feel like I've listened to so much music that now I just listen to like hand pans and meditation music. <laughs> but like <laughs> that's so wild. I've never thought but, about it like that. But um Go but still <laughs> I like but still I like to uh, experiment a lot and just be like I don't know. Things will catch my eye, whether it's Instagram, like a certain artist or like YouTube. I'll just be right. like, let me go like do something I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And then I end up finding like a new person usually that way. And playlists, but I don't use Spotify, man. Honestly. Yeah, I use uh, 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 Apple Music. And what I like doing is I'll have a song that's from one of my, my library. And if I like the genre, I'll there's that create a station with songs like it yeah and man i've been finding so much new music like that i just can't it's, get away from youtube cool. man that's i found every <laughs> every great country artist that i know mm -hmm. is just from digging deep into the youtube rabbit holes yeah what's up a, with the, what's the name of the guy that just uh that that joe rogan brought brought to the, oh to the oliver anthony oliver anthony did you hear that about his story insane. no i, I haven't like, dude the, i haven't well the craziest thing about in. this guy is he puts out richmond north of west or north Dope. of virginia amazing story amazing song well, he went on the Rogan and explained like 30 days prior to releasing that song. He had always played music, but 30 days prior, he gave himself to the creator. Like he, he was in a place, he was very down, you know, much not, not unlike myself, not all that long ago. Right. Um, and he, he was like, he just dropped to his knees and he prayed. He said he was in the, in the wilderness at his house. And he's like, God, he's like, God, if you'll help me, like I will follow the right path and, and just try to be 30 days later. He's the biggest sensation in the world. And then. He goes on the Rogan podcast, and, he, and now he's just preaching beautiful words to people for just for the sake of positivity. Yeah. So it's pretty wild and like yeah, profound when you actually listen to that dude's story. And it makes sense. I mean, yeah, you yeah. listen to his song, and it's a pretty, like that yeah. rich man, North or West or Virginia song, like he says some shit in there, like calling out the fucking pedophile rings and shit. Yeah. And like it's pretty wild, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, that song, yeah, that song made me tear up when right? I first heard it, dude. That just relatable. Keep you know? going. Really relatable. I, and I might be wrong. I didn't listen to the Joe Rogan, but I, I heard somebody else talking about it. They said that uh, he had been doing music for a really long time before that, which I hope is true because w when you've been doing it and just never gave up and it hadn't happened yet and then it happens, I feel like, I don't know. There's something about like never giving up. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's something that I, I we kind of, uh, I wanted to backtrack to what we were talking about, like with the natural talent versus oh, absolutely. Yes. like I feel like one of my skills that I've been given just through everything in life is just not giving up yeah and I just always knew I always had the vision even when there's no sign of it and there's still so far to go but it's yeah, it's coming be. it's coming together and you know I people came and went in my life that were so much more talented than me that would come into my life or be like a rival or something and I just always kept going and just be like, I got to build my thing. And then they would always just disappear and yeah. then you never hear their name again. And it's like, they stopped making music five years ago because they didn't see it happening. Yeah. And you're just like, I would have killed for the t what you have. And then, I don't know, it's all what you want out of life. But yeah. the way I look at it is, is like, I feel like the spectrum of life from challenge bottom to top, I think of it like a rock wall. In the beginning, it's like this. And then eventually, it's going to slope to a point. Now, if you stop at any point, you're going right back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to fall down, and you're going to start again. But, like, just to, just to pay homage to that point you're talking If you just keep going, like, the light's going to get a little brighter. The yeah. footing's going to get a little better. But it's no cakewalk, but if you just keep going. Because you become wiser and stronger and more capable to deal with the challenges ahead. Oh, yeah. That that warrior mentality that you're talking about, that you were born with, that gift, you know. That you foster, if you foster that as a man or woman in this world, I think you got just about anything you need to succeed. Yeah, that's, that's an important strength to have now, in, nowadays. Yeah, oh, know, especially in how, nowadays. in how society is cut through, you know. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I, I'm not sure who said this, but this quote that uh, God will always meet you halfway. Ooh. And that is like... It's absolutely been true in my life Ooh. because anytime there's been like a major lack or things are just really not working out, I can zoom out. And usually I'm aware of it in the moment, but it's like you 
probably know where you're messing up. Yeah, and uh -huh. some things just take time. You that's know? deep yeah. right there. Some things yeah, take that's time. That's a beautiful thing. It's but beautiful thing. You're like, well, well, that's also, that's also be, um, holding yourself accountable. Being honest you with know, yourself is being a aware. bitch sometimes. Oh, dude. Bro. Like, oh, yeah. That's the toughest That's truth. who we fear the most because it's who we have to spend the most time with. Yeah. I'm just yeah, dude, holding yourself accountable and, 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 and putting it that way is perfect. Seeing yourself going yeah, outside like and seeing yourself and you're like, man, you clearly know exactly what you need yeah, to be dude, doing. Yeah, dude, you like, like, come quit on, bitching, man. Quit quit complaining. You know exactly what you need to be doing. Oh, everything you know, changed like, when I, the mirror funny. in that bathroom right there, like when I got my, I realized I was rock bottom, bottom and I'm like you, I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to give up. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to do something. Instead <laughs> of walking around the bottom of this pit, yeah. I look myself in the mirror. I'm like, listen, motherfucker, what are you doing? Because all your decisions brought you here. Yeah. So what decisions are you gonna make to get the fuck out? Yeah, it's that simple. Quit being a bitch, man up, let's go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no. you really don't have a way out until you're dead. You know, if you're dead, yeah, I mean, you, you want to stay down there forever that. and just waller like yeah. so many poor souls that do. Mm -hmm. You know, more power to you. But like, I visited the bottom. I'm like, I don't like it. none of y'all, most of which myself. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go find my other version of myself right. up there somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah, man. It's always a reflection of the outside world always seems to be a reflection of our in of our inner world. And like whenever I'm like, you know, clean inside, moving my body a lot, watching positive stuff and my mind's good, things just seem like they happen smoother. And yep. it doesn't mean there's not inconveniences or of course. Yeah. like, yeah, it's been crazy. And I feel like you really have to like work harder than you probably think you do. And that's why I really tried to push to do this today because, you know, I might not be back for a while. That's and, what I'm saying, no, dude. We, and I've been doing, like, I did. We appreciate your time, Yeah, dude. really, I, really. appreciate your appreciate time a lot. Sure. I did yeah, all, a bunch of family stuff, session with you, next day, and then the next two days, session in Orlando. Hell yeah. And, like, uh, like with, a, with amazing people. And they nice. went amazing in an amazing studio. It was just, like, it was a dream. And then now I'm here on, like, very little sleep. Just like, I don't know. I want to make it the normal that I'm like pushing myself beyond like I, what I I call it the bounce thought. back. And that's exactly like where I'm I, at right now. When there, I started too. stumbling and, and like I would find myself on the end of a fucking bender or something goofy. It was like once I stopped finding the my excuses the next day. Like now, like last night, wonderful comedy show, sold out crowd. And we celebrated a little bit after. Woke up today, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to look like a fool on camera. <laughs> but no, Max said he was coming over. I got in the sauna. I got in the cold plunge. Oh, yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You bounce back, just like you're talking about. Like, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm those days that you don't want to do it. Fuck it. Who cares? Do yeah, it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you have to treat it sort of like the business. You know, you, yeah. people say, oh, I want to work for myself and, and not work as much. Are you kidding me? When you work for yourself, you have to work we triple are, the amount. Yeah. Each you know? one of us and is our... You have our, to grow something yeah. with substance. You have to work triple the amount. You're the greatest investment you're ever going to make. Oh, yeah. Yourself. Oh, and yeah. like you're talking about, you're, you're, I believe, you know, your spiritual, your mental, and your physical strength. Like those three pillars, man. You're, that's the best investment you can make. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Agree. If you strip it down to like brass tacks, you know? Yeah. yeah. Now, so, was it, how did that start? Like, it, it's just, like I'm curious to know, like... How long did it take you to, like, did you already ha already have that mental fortitude or is that something you had to cultivate? Dude, honestly, I had to cultivate, like, I feel like I was always fiery as a kid, but I always had maybe too much sweetheart and football got me right. Well, first I did Taekwondo and Ooh, that kind of toughened me right up on. a little bit with some, you know, some grappling and it, stuff too. It and gives us discipline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gave me discipline. Oh, yeah. And then I played basketball which that started to give me some more discipline too. But it was like first year I played in the, well, I can't really think. Uh, it's like that church league. It's, I don't know. It's called like upstart or something like that. <laughs> it's like a church league. It's like really soft. I played first year basketball, dominated. <laughs> like, and then next year, bro. That's where participation trophy yeah. started. Yeah, that is. It was like you play quarter court and like <laughs> I was way taller. I was like, like averaging like 28 points a game in like a really short game too. Like I was going crazy. Hell yeah. yeah. Next league. I know this seems like a long route. But, no, no, you're good. You know, take you the, were here for your take time. Take the scenic right? route. Let it rip. <laughs> Dude, so after that, then I played in the Police Athletic League, which 
He's at the Babe James Center. Babe James so Center. there are some very athletic people oh, yeah. at the Babe James Center. <laughs> and, oh man, we had some epic nights, crazy games. But pretty much I was That's just, awesome. I just was like, I just pretty much just played defense. I had four, right. I had four points all season. Um, That's that Shane Gillis moment right there, yep. where he's talking. To everybody who lives in like a you know an integrated society, all white kids, we all at one point saw like our buddy, our black buddy dunk in like eighth grade, and we're like, oh. I was like, oh, that's that, that, that's the level. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That's different. I'm never yeah. gonna do that. Yeah. So I'm gonna play defense. I'm gonna yeah. get really good at passing. <laughs> you know. I actually like out of uh, seeing that, seeing them dunking in eighth grade. I was like, yo, I gotta do something. <laughs> I actually ended up being able to dunk for Fuck a long yeah. time. I could probably warm up and maybe still pull it off. That was so, the only man. sport that, like, I hate. I don't <laughs> like running. But I could run full court fives for hours. I don't know if it was the competitive nature. I've always loved basketball. It's crazy. I would go down to Detweiler. It started with just me and the boys. Yeah. We would go down there and run two on two, three on three. Next thing you know, like the local older guys saw us playing. So they came before we before long, like fast forward like a year through this, we're not even getting court time. Because the Daytona, dude, Daytona boys now. are coming out. Port Orange, the Daytona Port, boys. Bro, like I'm talking squads of Everybody like. started getting the, their leagues together. And shit went from like. Quiet little white neighborhood to like yeah. we're in the middle of the hood running. You say running. Detweiler? Detweiler Park yeah, on yeah. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right yeah, in the heart of us. Beachside New Smyrna, yeah. and there is it like money. It's gambling. We were yeah. like, we're wow. not even getting court time now. I'm Damn, talking straight dude. badasses. We had to like call in my boy's older brother and his boys just to get on court. Yeah, you know, because they were they were ruthless. Yeah. So yeah. we're like, yo, Tim, come help us. Yeah. <laughs> they, they may yeah. do the GM. Yeah. <laughs> dude, it was nuts, man. Yeah, we started doing that over in 27th because of that. Yeah. Because everywhere else was busy. And then 27th started going crazy, yeah, too. Like, when yeah. I was really coming up, like, that was an intimidating place to play. I got some, I've had, had some good moments. There. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, Classic. so this is, so this is where we get to, all right, yeah. basketball is not working out. And then I'm like, maybe I should try football. And I think it might have been sixth grade. And I remember just doing, like, I didn't want to do it, but I just said, fuck it one day. And was like, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And football, I actually ended up getting really good. Getting some D1 interest. Where a lot of like, where, yeah, where? Where in the field did you play? Where oh, did you shine? I played like tight end, receiver, and like defensive end and like okay. outside linebacker. That makes sense. Nice. And, see and backup called. punter. Like I was always nice. good, but they're like, dude, dude. You're, you're playing Almost every down of the game. I feel game. like that's the smartest move you can make. Like, you always have to have a kicker on the back in the in the back pocket because, like, you get it. Like, that's the best job in the world. I think. Yeah. Yeah, you deal with a lot of pressure real quick, but like, bro, you're making a lot. Of my money. mom wanted me, my mom wanted me to be a punter or a place <laughs> kicker, and I was good I at both. I I honestly, if I trained, I could have done it, but it's one of those things where, like, I'm just meant for something else. Yeah. You no, know I, exactly. Like, but football, yeah, football, I really learned that because, like, I pretty early in my football career, I became a kind of, like, leader. Then, you know, I get to varsity, and you're, like, not the leader anymore, but then you work your way back up. Yeah. And um, so I was always kind of one of the guys, and um, I just learned just to, you know, the coaches didn't give me any slack. Some people, they didn't care. And I, yeah. I remember asking my coach. So important. As, in high school, I asked my coach, shouts out Coach Jenkins, I was like, why are you so like? Why are you so like? Why are you dick? so hard on me? Why are <laughs> you, you know, so hard that, on yeah. me? Like we were in a meeting, and he's like, "Reese, it's because I believe that you have more potential than anybody on that field." That man really loved you. <laughs> and he's like, "It's good." He and he said that he actually did say it was because he loved me, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, he had to push that, you somehow." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Damn." One of my favorite quotes in the world is, is, "How can I say that I love you if I'm not willing to push you to be the like the." There's this misconception where they say that true love, you love the person the way they are. No, I love that person because of what we, you know, the connection. But if I really love them and I know they're not doing their best self, I'm going to find a healthy way to help you. Right. And I expect the same respect in return. That's what love is. That's, exactly. that's unconditional love. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was, that was, a, that was, I don't know, that moment just sticks in my mind of like just it. being like, okay. oh, wow. Like, and that kind of molded like how maybe how I started treating some of my friends of just being like, you know, super honest about things. And was he, and does he continue to be a mentor to you? Coach? Davis? Um, I haven't talked to him in a long time. And I think it's one of those things where it's like, I wanted to like 
really kind of come back, like yeah. really be balling. Mm -hmm. Like he t he talks to my mom so you're sometimes. Your original mentor kind of thing, like like maybe yeah. not original, but like yeah. I mean, I've had a bunch of mentors, <coughs> but he definitely was one of those people that like because he was like ex military and stuff. So he ran our program very kind of militant. I think for young men, that's very important. Yeah. It was very like important. A man to step in. And yeah. Be like, hey, yeah, that yeah, was tight at a young age. That's yeah, because like, not only will the coaches scream at you or punish you, but like, like Jenkins, he was one of the most clever. Like, like he was a comedian, low key. Like he could rip you apart with like. <laughs> That's awesome. Like he told this one, we we're watching film, and he told this one offensive lineman who was just you know running flat foot. He was just running like this, just kind of trying to take a play off. And he was like, he's like Connor. You're over here pussyfooting through the willows. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <dude? laughs> like, he would just, like, like That's great dude energy. is a genius. Yeah. But, so, I, yeah, I'd say that really that high school football. And before that, shouts out Coach Jason Pat as well. It just really, you know, like two-a-days in Florida with oh, full God. pads on when you first start doing hitting drills, and it's fucking 98 like full humidity, yeah, 180 humidity. Yeah, and you're just like, <laughs> you feel like you know, with your helmet on, there's a wall like this close to your face. You're trying to breathe, and there's a reason so many elite football players come out of Florida. Yeah, I think it's that. I think so. You train in a fucking sauna, dude. Florida, <laughs> Texas, California, yep. and then up north, like yeah, they, New they, Jersey, they, New York. They're just they're hella disciplined. Well, like, they have the and they do they deal with a less oxygen base. Yeah, you know, they're at higher altitudes. It's a very different kind of elite athlete, but that's why like Floridians when they go up north and, and that oh, yeah. there's like a trade off of environment. You're, yeah. you're there's still elite athletes up there, but I will say like yeah. the Florida summertime two a day football yeah. player that is a ruthless animal. <sighs> and I I saw myself come out on the other side better and like always seeming to get like you know the upper hand from the universe like. And so I was like, all right, I know I can do pretty much anything if I can do that. Yeah. And so I set on the music journey. And honestly, I think a lot of it was procrastination was probably my biggest issue. Like Ooh. even and everybody can relate to oh, that. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. That one hit home. But I'm yeah. like, fuck. Presently. It seems <laughs> it seems like yeah. distraction from phones just ru like Oh, that's okay. and back in yeah. 2015, 16, it just it was there, but it wasn't the same. Okay. It right. was like once like the reels uh instagram stories tiktok era kind of hit then there was like a shift towards shorter form just mind numbing mm -hmm. yeah just and it's weird for our generation because I, I was born before cell phones but then i grew with the evolution of cell phones right like literally from day one when it became a convenience not like the big i don't remember <laughs> the big giant original right. phone, yeah but i remember the old nokia yeah where that had fucking Brick. snake oh yeah, snake the, and it had snake on that shit oh yeah and Such that, fun that was the birth of it you know, and then to see, and then to watch it evolve into this, we actually had a great conversation last night in the middle of our shroom trip about like how you know people tend to drift to the negative piece of the information instead of looking at all the positivity. Yeah. But the phone's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. You know, you have endless information, but you could teach yourself college on that little block. Yeah. But what do we do? It's Porn and reels. Abuse it. <laughs> like what? And order pizza. Yeah, oh, yeah. dude, DoorDash <laughs> is my downfall. <laughs> I made a lot of money on DoorDash when, when I was trying to get to LA. So when I yeah, there shouts out DoorDash. Right? No, I fucking <laughs> love DoorDash. You want to sponsor us, dude? Hook a brother up because I spend way too much money on your shit. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh yeah, man. Where is that land us in the I don't in the story? We were uh, we we were just coming. You, you so, had built learned your power from football, basically. Yeah, so I feel like. Yeah, I got the, as my trainer, Lewis Ford, the man, he calls it a, just the warrior mindset, you know? It's just like, this life is a battle where there's all these things like the phone and, you know, urges and whether it's food or sex or whatever, like vying for your attention, like trying to take your attention, which is ultimately your energy. It's where attention goes, energy flows. Ooh. And so, wow, that all, like that. yeah. Always just Sorry, trying to, always trying to that. take, you have to like, like Lewis says, he says, own your position. You have to like, be so sure of who you are and what you're here to do uh -huh. that you, 
you don't let those things like they might, you know, you're not going to be perfect, but you have to always like overcome. There's nothing's perfect, but yeah, having and, a clear vision is very important. And I think that we live in a world that has purposely tried to dull our masculine nature because mm -hmm. that is a nature that will own its position and be like, no, I'm going to stand up for what's right. right. And so they've tried to like dull that um, and look at the results just, yeah look, look at the results look around and it, it, it's an it's an attack on both sides you know yeah, it, sure. it is what it is but i think um i don't live in that mindset of like we're at war like every day no. i don't live in that fear mindset of like oh like the the government is trying to like you know <laughs> yeah. which there are obviously forces pushing on you yeah. Yeah. but i'm more so in the mind of like i'm going to i'm going to adjust based off what i know but my energy is going towards the mission. Yes, and amen. Just trying to get more of the energy back from reels, back from YouTube shorts, right. because you know I'll be on a roll. I'll make. I'll start a great idea, and then all of a sudden, maybe drift. you get a text message or you drift for a second, and then it's twenty minutes and I'm out of flow state. Yep. And that's what matters. Like trying to spend more time in that deep flow, mm -hmm. and. It's got to be in your Yeah, industry. that gets in the way. Well, it's funny because like I try to, my job uh, is all about making reels and working for other people and <laughs> doing social media uh, management and whatnot. And it's, and it's crazy because you'll find, it. you just literally, you, you couldn't have said it any better. You find yourself in a flow state because you're editing all these videos and everything looks cool, everything makes sense. And all of a sudden you go to the Instagram to go post a reel and all of a sudden you find yourself in the... <sighs> And the Explorer page is okay. That was posted. There's now, now I like to. It's almost like I deserve time on the uh, on Instagram now yeah. because I did that. Yeah, exactly. When I could have really one hundred percent been taking you know advantage of yeah. my time better. You, you earned a I mean? earned a treat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I th I've been using that uh, work mode like on the iPhone. You know, it's like a sleep time and all that It's stuff. like a dis It's like a do not disturb. Like on the newer phones, they have the like multiple do not disturb settings uh -huh. like and so i put it on work mode so you can control who can call you like who what calls yeah, will get through but okay. you won't get it won't ring you don't get text messages you don't get instagram sh stuff like that. but then you can go into it and still look it's yeah. just a, see my instagram you're just not that, like you said that little notification that that yeah. gravitates you to the phone yeah which exactly. which could spark like you know, you just well, go and take a dump. Next thing. thing you know, you've been sitting on the toilet for a half hour. Well, I heard the craziest <laughs> thing. So I heard that uh, Instagram knows when you're not on the app. So it sends you more notifications about other sh stuff, even though you're not getting, even if you're not getting any comments, likes, views, yeah. it still sends you notifications of other things that are happening. Yeah. Because it wants you back on the app. Because that's the only way it could, it could work is if you're on the app. And, and so I turned off all the notifications for all social media, yeah. my Facebook, my Instagram, all that stuff. It's TikTok. all turned off, period. TikTok too, bro. I get hell of notifications. Dude, I, I downloaded it. I never it. got it. I downloaded Don't do it. it. Yeah, I started no, I, it. I saw, I, I knew myself. That's like the first time I did ecstasy. I was like, oh, that was amazing. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I started, I opened up an app and whatnot and, and have a little profile, but I, I quit. I, I turned, I deleted the app from my phone. All right, so where were we? You had just... Uh, I actually took a notation where you're uh, focusing your energy and getting away from the distractions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the so, way, I'm going to, like, I put that down on your paper. Where your energy, wait, where attention goes, flow, goes energy, flows. energy flows. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah, Hell deep. yeah. That's deep. Um, yeah, is, that, is, so that a, is that a Reese original right there, or did you hear that somewhere? I think I just heard it out in the ether. And, and then you just put it in my you. Put it in my inventory. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. That's, <laughs> I like that yeah. very much. So I think, we're, I think we could probably go, let's see. Hi, are we kind of talking about high school? So, you know, went to college for a couple of semesters, mm -hmm. dropped out, moved to Palm Coast. That runs its course. Now you find yourself in a oh, So many details that I wish I can tell, but I'm like, how? Like, how graphic do you get about your past, you know? No, no, don't yeah, even, no. I mean, we, and not even, like, it. negative, just, like, crazy, just, just like, fun, you know, fun just, and I'll just say, silly Kind of like things. we told Max, yeah. like, this is just your first time on Trash the Treasure. So, yeah. like, even if we just, like, go over the highlights, yeah, and then we'll definitely have you back on. Dude, I, I can, would love to, You can man. go back and watch it and be like, because that's the beauty about watching yourself back. You'd be like, oh, I could have said this. I could have yeah, said yeah. that, you know? So, how was your transition from, uh, from that whole Palm Coast era? 
And is that was that right before COVID, or was that? Yeah, because well at this be, point, well you, you said you were depressed. In yeah, advance. so it's like it's 2017 at this point. It's, it's, it's just about to start. Yeah, so, so it's well, it's it's coming. It's coming. The storm is. <laughs> it's real. like a wave. We that don't I didn't know it's know coming, coming, but some shit's oh, yeah. about to go down. Nobody knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, I'm sure somebody knew it was coming. They just didn't tell us. <laughs> no, we're not going to yeah, take it to that. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to open that bag of tricks here. <laughs> so, let's see. So, I moved back moved back to my parents' couch in New Smyrna. And I'm just... I had this little, like, closet room on the side of the house. We called it the side stew. I just made it into a little studio. Oh, okay. Worse, probably, like, worst studio of all time <laughs> yeah right? like it was very similar to like a harry potter situation oh, so where we're, talking like, like, we're talking like really like, tight and there's like you know like boogie boards and stuff in there. <laughs> that's like, epic man i'm just picturing you under a staircase just i'm sorry yeah. looking back that's 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 great memory yeah right? i got a picture somewhere man it, i definitely have one that's classic and, were the boogie boards like your because you guys use stuff oh, yeah, to like yeah, isolate yeah. sound. No, this was just or was like it just the, like a storage. Room? The random, you know, Florida, New yeah. Smyrna Beach side like, outdoor. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's yeah. like your closet. Your chairs. Your yeah, you got like beach chairs. And beach chairs. You got one ski umbrellas. for some reason. There's like and this that. weird. There's a couple gardening <laughs> Which pots, is true. but you've never gardened anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so you're in your you're in their side stew. So I'm in the side stew, and <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, and. Just, you know, making music for a long time and um, working a bunch of different jobs and rebranding myself a couple different times. And mm -hmm. then I meet my engineer, Eric, who um, he then helped me take my sound to a different level. Like then it, that was the first time I started like consistently working like in a nice studio. Yeah, he's studio. got an awesome setup. He's a professional. And um, yeah, he's super great guy. EB Audio, mm -hmm. Eric Barrington. Um, and so I started working with him and... Just making records, COVID hits, still making records, making more because, you know, you start, we started getting like the random, like, what was it, like $700 that I got it like four times and then they just cut me off randomly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm putting all that towards music and then I start getting the call of ayahuasca is calling you. Mm -hmm. And there's like a specific people talk about the call and I was just like, yeah, whatever. That's some hippie stuff. And then oh. I get the call where it's like almost like an urgency of like, you are meant to do this soon and you need to find a way. One of my friends comes from deep in my past. We start talking about it. Um, we start texting. And then so she lived in Boulder. So I go out to Boulder. We do ayahuasca like in the middle of nowhere, Colorado, with like Sounds incredible. twenty people with like some Colombian people that work like down a in Colombia. Almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, and, that's not almost. I mean, it is. Yeah, spirit yeah guide. exactly. And uh, that that was a life changing like two nights of ayahuasca, and I basically got the call of like whoever it is, you know, grandmother. Very was was very clear. Like you. The message was, you need to move to L.A. and we will make sure you're taken care of. I call it the path of coincidence. Yeah. That's, what, like, like, that's what's happening that's to awesome, me. Man. God talks to me in, in big coincidences and he's going to show me the path. I just got to walk it. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. And gonna, I was scared, You guys keep man. going. I'm going to go use the restroom. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. That's that's. that's I was, awesome. uh... We could pause for a second. No, let it rip. Yeah, okay. Just, just keep going. Cool, yeah. I'll just, I'll just keep going. It's for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, at this point, you know, it's like when some other thing is like, you need to go. I'm like, how? I don't have that much money. I don't know really anybody. And I was like scared, of course. Well, the usual fears that everybody have. So my friend who my friend who brought me to the ayahuasca, she and she was kind of in the process of moving there. Okay. So it was like. We kind of tried to move together. It fizzled out. I stayed in Florida, and then I got another. And then I got another opportunity to go. And this is right when Ellie and I started talking. Okay. So when I, we started talking, middle of the night didn't happen. So this, yet. all of this ha happened after you, you and I were doing all that during COVID. Yeah. Okay. So this is you after yeah. you had. So I go off on gone. my. Yeah, I go yeah. off on my journey. I'm gone for like a month. Do ayahuasca, do San Pedro, 
in California. That's a whole. <laughs> What's San Pedro? <laughs> it's like a hallucinogenic. It's yeah. It's like a it's like a psychedelic cactus that um okay. is basically used to like open and purify the heart and yeah. kind of like realign you with like what do you really want I out think of that's life. The point of any psychedelic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and had a very positive experience. Very cool. helpful and. Um, and so along the way, Ellie and I start talking on Instagram. And this is before her song Middle of the Night blew up. And we just started talking. And then as things started to escalate a little bit, we were like, oh, we might like might like each other. We've been talking for a while consistently. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I get a chance to go to L.A. again to work with some people. And then uh, there's actually another San Pedro. Um and this is like months in between. This is like over the course of like a year, this okay. kind of like transpires. And so I go hang out with Ellie while I'm there. We, of course, are like, oh my God, where have you been my whole life? Mm-hmm. You know? And so then I'm like, I meet, I, and I work with some people in music. And so now I'm like, all right, the girl of my dreams I know is there. I now have some connections there. I need to jump. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're the and, only one in your way yeah, at that point. Yeah. And, she, and so I'm like, how do I do it financially? How am I going to make this work? Because like I didn't have, I didn't even have any credit at this point. Oh, you had zero. Yeah, I and had zero credit. I, that happened to me in my early 20s. That's a dangerous Bro, game. Bro, and I didn't know because nobody, yeah, told, I, nobody told me. They're like, you're better off with bad credit than no credit. I'm like, what? How does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I built my credit really good pretty quickly. How'd so, you do that? That's an important one for maybe. How did I do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I some people, people, for people want, are struggling like us that yeah. didn't fucking know, and nobody let let the secret loose. I started with a two hundred dollar um, Discover IT or Discover It card. One of the prepaid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cards. prepay. You pay two hundred dollars, and you just keep it going, yeah. and you just spend some money, pay it off. I didn't really spend more than like max like thirty percent. I try to stay. But they want you to spend, too. That's what I found oh, out yeah. in the long run. Oh, yeah. They want you to use it. But so eventually they moved my credit line from 200 to, I think, 1200 And then 1800 And then twenty five, And then they kept moving it up from there. And so I was surprised. I was like, damn. But um, And I got a couple more cards along the way. But yeah. I use them a lot and then pay it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they just... They want you in the system, but because it, it will bite you in the ass if you don't respect it. Yeah, yeah. it can but be anyways, your best friend or your yeah, worst yeah. Enemy. I want to take that little snippet because that's a great thing to tell these young kids. It really is. Nobody told me. I, no, I was me like, either. I had Zero no credit, advantage. so I'm like, well, I had some bad credit from some shit that happened with some shitty family back in the day. You know, back in the day before computers, like they could uh, they could sign your name on shit. Yeah, <sighs> and it's bad, bad yeah, and it's, it's, it was usually yeah. something dumb like a utility yeah. bill or something. So like they're look. I remember they, I'm like, dude, I was like five. I didn't. I wasn't paying fucking utilities. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? But anyways, yeah, yeah. So pick up, pick back up where you left off. So I try to move out. I'm like, okay, no credit, whatever. And then on the way to the airport, Ellie was taking me to the airport to fly back to Florida. She was like, oh, you can just go on Craigslist and look up sublets. I was like, what? What's and that? So, so when somebody else rents you some people apartment. rent okay, their okay, places yeah. out or like sometimes people own a house and even rent a room out mm-hmm. and in LA it's like there's so much so many places so there's a lot of availability God what's rent got to be like in LA I mean, you don't even I know you, you don't even want to know what yeah, we I pay can't we live in a night like a pretty nice place for like the sake of safety yeah and uh they're taxing I can't I can't <laughs> I mean here in New Smyrna it's blown up and uh, I can't I don't, yeah, I don't want to know the figure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, pretty much, we cheap. could have a, a very nice house in New Smyrna with a backyard. If you have a backyard, you Cherish are <laughs> you're rich. Oh, in, yeah. in L.A.? Well, in L.A., but I'm just saying in life in general, That's true. like yeah. That's a, a backyard, one. when you don't have a backyard, it's so valuable. Oh, the fact that I can go out there, like my brother's not home at Privacy Fence, I can get my, my ice bath naked and just kind of and then stand there and enjoy the sunlight. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah, privacy is everything. Fuck right? yeah, dude. Nice. <laughs> no, I'm I'm laughing because I used to do a lot of outside outdoors naked activity yeah, when I lived in New Smyrna. Oh, that's how humans were supposed to be. Yeah. With melons to Dude, around my, my, too. <laughs> my dream in life, like I have, I mean, I have the count, the compound plan and all this stuff. Me too. To, to involve my the, my loved ones, but what I want is when I step out my bedroom door, there's a toilet outside and a shower outside. I want to be able to take my morning poop looking out over the woods and my showers outside. That's mm-hmm. all I want out of life. 
Yeah, man. That's beautiful. That's, that's, I'm going to know I've made it it's when I life. get those two things. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take that dump with my coffee, just looking out over it. Be like, yep. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'll, I'll resume. Um, I keep derailing the story. No, dude. I, I love the details. I mean, as long as you guys aren't pressed on time. Cause no. I was like, I know... You yeah, gotta yeah, go. Yeah. Soon. We got. We still got 25, 30 minutes. Oh, let's go. Yeah, we, we're good. Dude. We're Rogan's good. doing four hours. <laughs> dude, it's wow. a lot. Yeah, I apologize. Today is a yeah. Lot. Our first episode we did the, we went for four hours. Our, our, the clip that I have, the, the 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 one clip is two hours and forty three minutes. Yeah. So Damn. and and it yeah. was if like that. Yeah, yeah. It was a big Anyways, break. so she tells me you can just go on craigslist and obviously it's sketchy but i go on craigslist and the first listing i see it looks like exactly what i was looking for thousand bucks a month i'm just like yo master bedroom bathroom in it hell yeah in a elysian valley which if that sounds real. people that know El- I, I love the the word elysian yeah, like yeah. it's like kind of like, like a that. nirvana heaven it's a fun word. and so i'm like oh Elysian Valley and I'm like that's probably going to be the one it ended up being the one the first one I saw as soon as I got on the plane so boom get that I'm door dashing I get back to Florida I'm door dashing doing a couple sessions with this guy and so I'm saving up some money I buy a car from my dad and like switch out my car Plus some mo- plus a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. Buy a car for my dad. Not a nice car. 2009 Chevy Malibu. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm I got the spaceship because my other car. This is what 2021 November 2021. I'm about to go out. Mm-hmm. My other car is a 2000 Buick Century. Yes. Like this is like I remember that this is a boat. Like, <laughs> and it's very questionable. Like it's not making it to California. <laughs> yeah. So we've all had that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm in, I get the Malibu, load up, and I go. I go out there with maybe like, I, I got $1,000 for rent, and I got maybe like 800 in, in To, to make life work. Eight, 800 to make it work. I'm like, I'm going to go out there, DoorDash, I'm going to make something happen. Yes. Like, fuck it. There you go. That's Worst that, case that's scenario, the right there. I walk back. We're uh, Mike Posner and walk across the country. <laughs> So shout out to Mike Posner on that shit, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, hell yeah. Um, you got bit by a rattlesnake on that journey, right? Um, but out of love for a friend, like that's that's deep yeah. to give up everything he had and to fall in love with himself. That's that's unheard of. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, dude. Um, I started. I, fo- it. I followed that. Story I started very it. Deeply. I started it. Um, <laughs> so I drive out, and I'm you know. I'm making and I'm making good time. And I wanted to make it in three days because I'm doing no hotels. Dude, what are they gonna charge me for a hotel? Yeah, right. One one twenty nine at the yeah, least. Yeah, like yeah. could do a shitty Airbnb, That's fucking like but 13, 14% of your fucking life's revenue. Dude, exactly. Yeah, like, can't afford that so, shit. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I'm going, I'm like, damn. <laughs> Cause we got gas. It's way farther than you think. It's twenty five hundred miles to That's where I was important. going. So yeah. I'm driving, I get to Texas, I stay the night in uh El Paso. So if you're sleeping any, in the car, yeah. If oh, anybody's yeah. familiar with the geography of El Paso, where it is, it's like way out there. Just on the moon, basically. Yeah, you're you're on the moon pretty mm-hmm. much. And so I wake up, batteries dead. Oh no, dude. Flat tire. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, dude. And this dude comes out of nowhere and helps me pumps helps me pump the tire and gets the car turned on like i still follow this guy to this day i think his name was juan i don't want to misquote but I, I have to look back but that guy shouts out that guy he was like yeah. he was an angel yeah. well it's funny that god will test you in those moments like yeah. you're 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 right there you're going after the dream and yeah, you wake just... up you're probably tired fucking you're not that comfortable well, I was just about You're to say. You're worried, and then you wake up, and, and like a lesser man or woman would look at that and be like, fuck this, I'm going home. Yeah. But at no point, in, I'm, I'm going to assume that at no point that morning was it, all right, time to go home. It was, all right, how the fuck am I going to figure yeah, this out? It was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, dude, we're almost there. We're <laughs> yeah, in bro. El Paso. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I feel like your story just tells you it's been a pattern of like situations that you've 
they're just kind of keep just, going. Yeah, they just yeah. just kind of seem you to be keep unfolding going, man. in a very beautiful way. Yeah, there always seems to like if you really look, there's almost always a way out of like yes. right. the, the pinch. Yes. Right. Um. So I'm like, sh- he comes out of nowhere. He gets me right. So I start driving to go. I'm like, I gotta go get a tire. My tire like blows up on the way to get a tire. So I'm like riding like rims scratching the ground. Get to the tire store. They slap a new tire on. They charge me two something oh. for a tire, bro. Yeah. In El Paso. So then, boom! All of a sudden, I'm driving. I leave the tire place. Car starts smoking. No, I'm sir. like, bro, what yeah, is going up on? Testing you, man. Pull up to the auto zone. Batteries screwed. Just toast. Bone toast. So I get a new battery. Two forty. So I'm like, bro, I, I, go, yeah, that's I got 30% of your I got money. like 400 yeah. bucks, no, so maybe. Yeah, you're down you're to 73. Uh, yeah, Something I'm like down low. I'm low. <laughs> and, and I'm like, fuck. So I just keep driving. And I call one of my friends because he was always, he was this dude I met during ayahuasca. And he just always was kind of like looking out for me. And I called him and he like immediately knew. He was like, and I wasn't coming on some weird stuff, but like I was supposed to see him soon anyways. Yeah. So I call him and like he was just like, Bro, are you okay? Like, do you need money? And he's like an older dude. He's probably like 35, like he's got a shit together. 38. He's got a shit together. He's got a detailing business and yeah. and uh close to Boulder. So awesome. he sends me five hundred bucks. I'm back. I'm back on the road. It's funny you just touched on what I believe used to be human telepathy. That's why you think of somebody before they text you. Abs- well, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. dig into that. No, next it's time. real. It's yeah, yeah. energy rippling through. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so then, boom, I'm on the way. I get to California. First day, I door dash. So busy. Everybody's driving fast. No idea where I'm at. Terrible. That's got to be the fucking worst. And through a friend that I, I had a conversation that, you know, somebody felt called to be like, you know, I wasn't going to do this because I don't know you that much yet, but I feel called to do this. They hooked me up with a, dis- a job at a, gr- at a grow place, at a weed growing place. That's awesome. So I start trimming and growing weed. I, in the first week, become the fastest trimmer. I'm trimming more than the dudes who have been there for a long time. And they're, they were G's, too. Like yeah. They were killing it. But I just was like... You know. well, there you was were, an urgency. Well, you were hungry. Yeah, to your, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. you're, you're hungry. You were dead. Like, this is your... Yeah. yeah, everything is riding on your ability to trim this bud. Yeah, dude, it really, it really was the fact that you say it like that. <laughs> and so I'm, you know, driving in downtown LA every day for work, five days a week at like eight a.m. Terrible. Don't worst place to be that I've ever been was downtown LA. Mm-hmm. But a lot of no, stuff no. goes, on, a lot of stuff going on there. So I'm start making good money. I discover Airwan. Erwan is like the rich people grocery store. What? And so it's like way better quality food and way more expensive, like unreasonably expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I start making a bunch of money, spending it all at Erwan. So still broke, but paying (laughs) paying rent in LA, doing sessions with other producers, getting better, just doing it. Yeah, we're on the experience. Yeah, 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 now you're building. And um, so I just just kept building and... um, Eventually, I got a job with Disney, and so I started working with Disney on some like, move. It's like I was dealing with like foreign language stuff for like getting the audio files for like we need the Kardashians like season two, episodes one through sixteen Portuguese Brazil. So I'm like handling that stuff randomly. One of my one of my friends got me the job, so I'm in there, um, and just still just trying to get better, trying to get better. Lose that job. That's the beginning of the year. Lose that job. Start making money remotely in other ways with like some AI stuff. I don't want to go too far into that, but start making, you know. <laughs> but it's just been this whole, and uh, now I've just been, you know, just doing music like mostly full time, yeah. like making my money remotely. And um, it's been crazy, man. I've got the the blessing to be in the room with people that are so much better than me 
so many more accolades, such, you know, Grammys, hit songs, and just get to study from yeah. like yeah. some of the best people in the world. It rubs um, off. If you man, surround yourself, by it. if you surround yourself with people, it better gives you something to strive for. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I will say this: I got two questions that I, I'm going to ask every guest. Fire. Um, and I think it enc- it encompasses what we're trying to do here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is deep. Let's do it. So, so think about it before you answer. Um, have you found in your life? That you are your worst, your own worst enemy. Absolutely, yeah. Without a, without a shadow of a I doubt, like, like yeah, no, I got always, you. yeah, always. Like, yeah, and I think it's because not only are we slightly scared of our full potential, Oof. Oof. we're also also scared slash lazy of the work that we know comes it with takes, achieving those things right. and what it takes. Right, we are praised exactly. like, we're praised in public for what we practice in private. Like oh, yeah. m- my friends that are really killing it as music producers, they're, you know, they've showed me their Google calendars and they're the booked, they're insane. booked out for weeks. Yeah. Like, it's on, the work you know, ethic, on man. the weekend a lot of times too, like doing stuff and then, and then that doesn't count. You get an extra call of like, you know, we're going to be with a so-and-so artist tonight. And, and like, you know, they want to work late. So you're like, oh, shit, now I'm in the studio till 6 a.m. And, mm-hmm. and then I got something at 1 tomorrow. And But you just That's keep amazing. going because you know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather be tired <laughs> than broke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. bro. And then the other one, <clears throat> you know, we'll get back into it. I know we're, we're getting low on time, but um, uh, this is more for me. And I want to know, because this is something I coined, the trash of treasure. I see it as, as my life's journey to what I've done. <clears throat> so when you think about that, like, what do you think? What does it mean to you? Yeah, what does is, what is trash to treasure mean to you and in and, 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 and comparatively to, like, your life or the way you see the world? It was, <clears throat> I, I very strongly relate to it because I come from... Always being the poor friend. Mm-hmm. My whole life being the yes, poor sir. friend. You know, didn't get a car when I turned 16. Um, which is such a, you know, first world example. But That's true, though. Always, hey, always you, you know, didn't dress the nicest. Wasn't the worst dressed. I always had some style. But I just always felt like a little bit trashy compared to everyone else. And also, in my mind, very kind of all over the place. But I knew I had potential. Yeah, Like that trash. That's got... You could tell it's it's, an artist, it's, tra- that. it's charged yeah. up. It's got potential. <laughs> it's on a brick wall. <laughs> but you have to take that potential, find your demons, fight them, and refine yourself. It's yes. a it's a refinement process. So I've found that there's no like now I'm here. No. There's there's plateaus. There's different plateaus yes. while you're climbing the mountain, but it's definitely a, a refinement and evolution, which I believe is like mm-hmm. one of the main purposes of this life. Amen. Like Experiencing that. the human state and everything that comes with it, but constantly evolving. Yes. And that's yeah, it. Yeah. Great question, man. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's been such a big part of my life. You know, it, it, I've, I've been running from demons for so Like, it's funny you bring up the clothes thing because I, I relate to that. My coolest clothes in ninth grade, they were only cool because like we couldn't afford nice stuff. So my friends and I, we, we created this little little group um, for no other reason than we just wanted to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. We were the S5Ts. I'm not going to shout out to I'm not going to say what it means because it's pretty derogatory. <laughs> um, but I remember going into ninth grade, we were these busted little broke. There was one well-off kid, but you know. He was one of the ones that wanted to be like, you yeah, know, wanted to be the rough. He wanted guy. a little bit of struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wanted it in his life, so he joined. He was cool, but uh, my coolest clothes were spray painted. Wow. I would go out and take my Walmart, like, because you get the five pack of the Walmart t shirts, mm-hmm. and I was out making stencils, and I'm spray painting S five T's and all this shit. Yeah, and like coincidentally, because I came in with this just fuck it mentality, because I didn't, I didn't really have like a hometown. I was born here in New Smyrna, and then moved all over the fucking map, ended up back here, and and then. Something about that, and I for, I lost it immediately because I'm ninth grade spray painted clothes. I'm getting the prettiest girls in the class. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't have the confidence to date any of them, but they were all they're all, all about, about it. it. Yeah. So you were owning your position. You're yeah, just that's like, who I was. That was yeah. probably the first time in my life that I ever was. I didn't actually love myself because I was still hiding behind many many masks. Oh yeah. That I've since just been trying to remove and remove and remove. And, um, well, as a young person, you know, we, yeah. all, go, we all go through that. Oh, yeah. And then try depending to, on where you started in find, life. Try to find our identity. You could have more masks, you know, yeah. like it doesn't mean 
like that's one thing I've learned. Any of blood come from humble beginnings. Like, yeah, you you might have started further back, but just keep going. Yeah, yeah. who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. We're not worried about. You know, I, I got this thing I see on the comedy shows. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where you're at. I want to know where you're going, how you're getting there. Mm-hmm. That's all I really care about. That's a bar, right? I like that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, man. Well, we we, I, was, uh, we got ten more minutes. Yeah. We can do we can do ten more minutes. Yeah, let's run ten more minutes. Sometimes that's yeah, the no, golden. Well, yeah. Uh, so 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 what's um okay so to, to conclude it too as well uh what's your what's what's your vision consist of too now yeah, where you're you, now where are you going where it is where yeah now that you're where you're at what's what is you know what's your goal what's next for Reese I think just uh push it, continuing to push my limits as far as like how much effort I'm exerting Ooh. into what I do right. because. You know, there's always the voice of like, oh, you're tired, da, 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 da. Like, you know, I was going to like be even more late and get a coffee to be here. I'm like, dude, you don't fucking need a coffee. Like, just do it. Yeah. Like, just show up and like, I just did some deep breathing and got, you know, got centered. But um, where I see myself going is like my main goal. Like you mentioned, like the compound. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think my nearest goal is like, I want to have a lot of land kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Really, Hawaii is one of my goals. Um, just still in the United States, but on an island, and I don't know. It's yeah, it's call, it. it's calling hey, it's me. It's your um, dream. Be proud yeah. of that shit. Who cares yeah. where it is? I don't care. But, it's in Antarctica. Having land in a compound yeah. is the greatest thing. I just want to be my, best way you I just can want my that. people around me. Right. And exactly. Yeah. And really, the goal is, uh, you know, through other businesses as well, not just music, is to have multiple compounds and be able to travel the world and like with you know a small tribe and you know if these got people want to be over here and these people want to be over here but like places that we can all access and then that it really was born from this idea where i was in costa rica on a mission trip in high school and and again the random voice tells me in a dream build self-sustainable communities there, I was just about to say, There's, you're the community. Yeah, no, what do you, it sounds what like you're you looking for community. So by self-sustainable, it would be we grow all our own food. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, there's special types of houses that are called earth ships, which I think they've been even more modernized now, but they basically, they can regulate their own temperature. It's they like can, a hobbit hole where, you know, where yeah, they, do kind like the, of, they use the dirt as yeah, the house. They can filter <laughs> their own water. and That's pretty cool. They're, they're amazing. And, um, kind of like built in with the nature. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see awesome. like building villages of like more modernized versions of that. Okay. Samwise Gamgee is like one of my heroes. This is a bad motherfucker. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. He lived in one, bro. Hell yeah. I get dude. down like Sam. That's awesome, man. Sam, bro. What a, what, That's, That's awesome, the nerdiest man. thing I've said this week. So. Dude, dude. I, I'm a recent Lord of the Rings guy. Like, oh, yeah? I, I oh, hadn't so you're seen just, it. Okay. Yeah, I was scared. I was scared of the mystique for my whole life. Not actually scared, but I just didn't watch it when it came out, and I was just like, I don't know if I'll like it. I'm such yeah. a fantasy and Dude, like medieval it's, nerd. It's yeah, the only way I got into it because of the filming techniques they used to. Oh, I to, can't to even make, imagine to from make your make, perspective. Yeah, to make the uh, hobbits look smaller, yeah. Yeah. Gandalf look normal and whatnot like that. Yeah. The techniques used. And then were you fast incredible. forward to like the Hobbit and like when they brought Smaug to life, like in the details in that fucking dragon. Yeah. Holy shit, from your angle, that's going to be nuts. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You, you can only imagine getting to that level. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I see it, and I'm like, oh, a lot of movies post Lord of the Rings definitely were strongly influenced by oh, Lord yeah. of the Rings. Right, right, right. And to think you go back and like go back in the history a little further where J.R. Tolkien, man, because I've actually I've tried to read the literature because I'm, it is so fucking, that dude was like next level smart as far as like a creative mind goes mm-hmm. i mean creating languages civilizations yeah it's incredible like such a backstory yeah. like i tried to read the, uh, the silmarillion it, it, there's so many t- spin-offs to that's the one around. that's like the elven that's like all about the elves kind yeah of. Mm-hmm. yes yeah i like the origin story kind dude, of dude i i'm one of those people where i'm like he pro you know he probably kind of made it up but like there's okay. similar like traces of like that type of culture like throughout like just i don't know things that i've like books and like media and stuff and i'm like i wonder if they're ever like talking kind of about something that was real oh, or is real i believe i uh, follow joe know, rogan's yeah. i follow joe like i i truly believe like this is just opinion 
Don't jump my shit. <laughs> um, I do think humans built the pyramids, but I think Joe Rogan said it one time, and it Me resonated too. the best. I think there were, at one time there was a, a species of human, because there's many subspecies in humanity, just like there's a lot of little countries in the United oh, yeah. States, you know? And I think there might have been a subspecies of people. They're free of ego. They were mapping the cosmos. They were probably practicing what would be um, like perceived as magic. I'm not talking fireballs, right, right, but right. like telepathy, yeah, you, mental yeah, connection, yeah. shit like that. I think that the the pineal gland, like it was all connected way deeper back in the day. Oh, yeah. So, and then you fast forward to today, and it's been mind numbed and mm-hmm. covered up. But yeah, absolutely, like you're saying. I think, and then if you were to go back, keep, let's keep going back in Earth's history, damn humans history. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's. And anybody existed. who tells you they do know, like you're full of shit. No. Yeah, 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 you're definitely. Yeah, I fully agree with everything you yeah. said. Like, I um. Just based off of the the experiences that I've had in my own life and things of the dots I've been able to connect, I definitely even some of the recent architecture, um, like the cathedrals and stuff, are just mm-hmm. like they're the one in Spain and the one that just went up. They finally did they finally finish it, or they still have a couple more years to finish. I don't it? know, but there's ones that were far dating. Like I don't know if they're things that we're capable of with modern. Yeah. Right. Uh, There's a lot well, of the guy that, that yeah the yeah. guy that actually pretty much designed the cathedral in Spain I mean he designed it like 150 years ago and he ended up dying and oh. not, never seeing the the results that's of this crazy he planted the seed of a tree he's never going to get to enjoy the shade of and and I that's think a that's, very important thing and I can't speak for like the women species but I know as a man we're, I th- I feel like I'm born with that yeah. my job is to plant seeds that I'm never going to get to enjoy the shade of yeah. but my future generations will and that's enough for me yeah you know um yeah man well this will, is amazing man this is amazing one more thing i just kind of clicked in my head i want to get it on camera so i don't forget it um it's funny that you say that because like all right, you know how they say like if you're looking for love don't find it well i just i literally just had an epiphany just now where like i think it kind of works that way for the questions of the universe too when you stop trying to answer them you just kind of know like it yeah. just comes to you and you're like like I, like i'm not saying we know in effect that we could go into like a professional debate but i think you know at mm-hmm. like a, the heart there's knows. a beautiful, yeah yeah there's you a know, beautiful quote yeah. that, said, that goes uh, uh happiness is like a butterfly it, uh, once you stop chasing it it might just alight upon you i think it's, it's <laughs> I like everything that. i've never thought it's about true. it that way i thought it was just interpersonal connection but i mean yeah. everything yeah. if you just get out of your own way stop looking and focus on yourself the rest of the shit's just gonna kind of and yeah. my father greatest quote i've built my whole well you know because i was lucky enough to get a father you know, mm-hmm. man, that came into my life. And, you know, he told me, it was very simple. Wake up every day and work hard. The rest of the shit's just going to work itself out. Yep. And that's exa- and it's happened. Yeah, Even it's in my inspir- darkest time, I woke up, went to work. Yeah. Did I want to? Fuck no. It's an inspiration to see you do what you did, man. Because, like, I remember, you know, we were just experimenting and whatnot at the studio. And I was learning a lot and whatnot. But I never, I, musically, I never really took it seriously. You know what I mean? I was always trying to focus on something else and, and just... Seeing you, what you're, seeing what you're doing is pretty, it's pretty damn cool, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Awesome. And I was mm-hmm. always stoked that you were giving me the chance to come in, you know, because I knew yeah, you man. were so busy. Yeah. I was like, this man is super busy and is like still making time. And um, well, I mean, I had the equipment, yeah. and I also wanted to learn a little bit of the production side of things because it's it's good to know the music, and it's also good to know the production side of the music, just yeah. so you understand. I learned so much from universe. from those sessions. Like those sessions alone, you know, taught me how to like jam in the pentatonic scales yeah. and stuff it's like stuff like that just like awesome man um i'm glad you were able to get a little bit of a something out of those yeah of oh yeah kind of, i mean there's still good ideas floating around yeah. it's just like hard it, you know you probably could have organized things better but it's all good it is what still it is. in a hard drive somewhere yeah exactly <laughs> and the last the newest stuff we made is uh is amazing. I'm really excited for it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping to hear something here soon yeah a little i'm bit more yeah, i can't wait to hear it yeah, yeah man. Oh, last night when Absolutely. I got home, I was listening to some of your stuff. I clicked on. I want to, you know, I try to get to know. I was listening to some of those beats, and I'm just sitting there like, it's great production I, value, on, man. I want like a low dose of mushrooms too when I got home. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on like, were they on a on the beat store or like on an Instagram? Post? It was it was from your the the link from oh, okay. your Instagram okay. profile. Okay. Those are all so old. Those are just beats to sell. Okay. Yeah. Which like awesome. if you if you like those, then it's like great production stuff. That's like definitely not even close to my best work so it's yeah. like if you like those then 
you'll like the other stuff. But okay, uh, cool. but yeah, coming coming up this year, just oh, gonna yeah, be. If you have any yeah. shouts, man, that you want to. Yeah, anything. I'd say a little people to know. This I'd say uh, just coming up this year, gonna be posting a lot of music where it's me singing and collabing with either myself as a producer or myself and other people. Um, but really, just again, like putting out my own music and. Uh, these past two years, it's been a lot of like making songs for other people and with other people for them. But um, I'm kind of circling back to not only still doing that, but getting back to releasing again. Good stuff. I yeah. feel like that's my. Yeah, you were one of the only ones that like stayed consistent with doing that. You know, a lot. Of, I, you know, I know a lot of musicians like David and all them that are extremely talented yet they don't release anything, and it's just like, oh man, you can't. You know. People, people means can't hear you. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, man. David. So, yeah. What's your um? Uh, what's your freak what, of what's nature? Your so- oh, dude, he's yeah. a freak of nature. Let him know what to follow you on. All right. All yeah. Follow me uh, on all platforms. Reese Canyon. R E E C E Canyon. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagrams at Reese underscore Canyon. Um, and thank you so much for having me today, guys. Absolutely. This was a great conversation. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for yeah, sharing man. your story. First man. of many, I stoked, you know, stoked that you were part of it. We're, anytime, we were able to get you in here you know, yeah. while you were in Florida. Hell yeah. Anytime there's a chance for me to come in and uh, talk your ear off, yeah, I man, would sure. love to take it. The only, <laughs> gift, the only gift I know I got is the gift of gab. So this is literally my favorite thing yeah. in the world to do. So yeah, we're going we're gonna gonna to make, gonna make this a regular thing. So yeah. let's do yeah, it, man. Look for it. Look Hell for yeah. it soon. All right, boss. All right. We love you. That's a wrap. Thank you, guys. (laughs) This is another episode. We'll see you on to the next one.